Was July 15th Turkey's Reichstag fire? On July 15th, 2016, Turkey experienced what looked like a military coup attempt. Turkey is no stranger to military coups, having suffered three in 1960, 1971, and 1980. But this attempt was different. It was the first time in Turkish history that a coup attempt began during rush hour, a time most inconvenient for a military attempt. The perpetrators did not capture the president, the prime minister, or even a local mayor. With a few exceptions, radio and TV stations and internet communication centers were not taken under control. The putschists did not try to block social media. Instead, the plotters took action that didn't help their cause, but rather enraged the public, including shutting down Bosporus Bridge, bombing an unoccupied corner of the parliament building, targeting police headquarters, and shooting civilians. These things never happened in previous coups, and months after the fateful events of July 15th, these actions still lead to many unanswered questions. What exactly happened that night? Who was responsible? And was Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan involved in some way? Like the 1933 Reichstag fire that helped solidify Adolf Hitler's grip on Germany, we know that Erdogan benefited the most from the events that night. President Erdogan called the coup attempt a gift from God that would allow him to cleanse the military. He couldn't keep his story straight about what he knew and when he knew it. He used three different times when explaining when he learned about the coup. In the hours after the coup attempt began, senior intelligence and military officials close to Erdogan seemed unworried about the events. The director of national intelligence neither informed nor protected Erdogan. The military's chief didn't inform Erdogan and was captured by the putschist, even after the chief of intelligence explained what was happening. General Mehmet Disli, the brother of a close Erdogan associate, led many officers to take part in the attempt. These and other perplexing incidents have led experts to question whether the coup was genuine. The Erdogan government immediately blamed an elderly Muslim preacher, Fatullah Gulan, and his sympathizers, while the attempt was still underway and no putschist was even apprehended. Bir grup, but the government has been unable to provide credible evidence to back up their assertions. To prevent an open discussion of the incident, the government has swiftly shut down 121 media outlets and arrested scores of journalists. Critical press was totally silenced. As a result, Turkish people have been denied a chance to hear the other side of the story. Erdogan's AKP party delayed a parliamentary investigation into the coup attempt, and once it started, they dominated the committee. The committee refused to hear testimony from critical witnesses, such as the military chief of staff, the head of the National Intelligence Organization, and other critical figures. The Turkish government strictly censored information that contradicted the official narrative, alleging pro-Gulan officers staged the coup in order to avoid being purged at a military council meeting in August. But a different story emerges from a few critical pieces of information. In 2015, the top brass of the Turkish military began discussing an intervention to stop Erdogan from becoming a dictator and restore Turkish democracy. The rumors of a brewing coup compelled the Turkish general staff to issue an unprecedented denial on March 31, 2016. Erdogan's close circle was aware of these discussions. Из партии Ватан, которые только что совсем недавно вышли из тюрьмы, в том числе бывший глава военной разведки генерал Исмаил Хакипикин, 
адмирал Санарпалат прибыли с конфиденциальным визитом в Москву. То, что они транслировали на встречах с экспертами и специалистами в Москве, на встрече с нашими сотрудниками и с другими заинтересованными лицами в прояснении обстановки в Турции в тот момент, они говорили о том, что любая попытка военного переворота в настоящий момент будет американской. Instead of trying to stop the intervention, they allegedly developed a plan to counter the intervention and any limits to Erdogan's power. A weakened, compromised coup scenario reportedly was organized by the National Intelligence Service in collaboration with some key commanders to be put into action on July 15th. According to officer testimonies, on Monday, July 11th, select special forces units received instructions from the office of Erdogan loyalist General Zakai Aksakali that they would participate in an unconventional exercise on July 15th. On Thursday, July 14th, a secret meeting was held at Special Forces Headquarters in Ankara with the participation of the Military Chief of Staff, Akar, Intelligence Chief, Faidan, and Special Forces Commander, Aksakali. The same night, Special Forces Commander Aksakali and Intelligence Chief Faidan held a separate meeting. On the evening of July 15th, Erdogan allies led two groups of officers to action. A. Officers who were under the false impression that the military was staging a real coup with a full chain of command. B. Officers who received orders to participate in an unconventional exercise. That night, many top-level commanders realized that this was not a genuine attempt and refrained from participating. The remaining small number of officers and the units under their command were left alone and were easily subdued by angry crowds and police forces. The very next day, Erdogan began a monumental purge of public institutions. <laughs> Twenty-eight hundred military officers were dismissed and arrested, the majority of which were not on duty that night. Some were on vacation, some were abroad. Arrest warrants were issued for Turkish military officers who serve at NATO posts abroad in Europe, Afghanistan, and the United States. 2,745 judges and prosecutors were arrested that same day. Observers noted that the list of people to be arrested was prepared well in advance. Even a judge who died two months before the coup was included on the list. Today, more than 128,000 people have been sacked from government posts, including 7,000 doctors and 7,316 academics. Around 92,000 people were detained. More than 45,000 were arrested, including 162 journalists. Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch reported systematic torture in detention centers. We've been told of ill treatment ranging from, you know, verbal abuse, threats, to leaving people without food for days or even water for days. Physical abuse such as uh, beatings and even uh, in the severest of cases, uh, instances of rape in detention as well. As a result of the coup attempt, President Erdogan met four goals. One, he replaced tens of thousands of judges, prosecutors, teachers, and bureaucrats with his loyalists. Two, he humiliated and subdued the military completely, purged thousands of officers, shut down military schools, and reorganized the military's education, hiring, reporting, and promotion systems. Three, he eliminated all the commanders opposing the Turkish army's intervention in Syria, Shortly after the purges, the Turkish army entered Syria under General Aksakali's command. 4. He gained momentum for his executive presidency bid, which would eliminate the prime minister, parliamentary investigators, and parliamentary approval of his cabinet, and crucial checks and balances on his power. The failed coup attempt ultimately was successful for one man, Recep Tayyip Erdogan.